Um, sustainable transport is one of my interests. Um, the reason I became interested in particularly bike trailers uh, is Jason mentioned, um, well one of the things also is that we use a lot of energy for transport. If you look at the energy uses in New Zealand, transport is the biggest user of energy from the figures that I looked at. So 42% of our energy uh, is used on moving stuff around. Uh, and as Jason mentioned, a lot of those trips that we're doing are very small ones. He mentioned the two thirds of all journeys are less than six kilometres, which is an easy bike ride. But a third of all journeys are less than two kilometres, which I can walk with my young children relatively easily. And in terms of numbers in Christchurch, there's over 100,000 journeys every day uh, by cars. And census figures show that only 6% of those have passengers in them. So a lot of those are single user, one person, one car. And you can see, I often do this with my kids, stand at an intersection, just look at the cars going past, and sure enough, 9 out of 10 just have one person in them. And in Auckland, uh, there's 70,000 car journeys every morning under two kilometres. So I started thinking about this, and if I want everybody else to change, then of course I need to change myself. And there are a lot of few uh, principles, I suppose, in travel behaviour. We tend to do what everybody else is doing. So when I left home, my parents said, you need to buy a car, because that's what everyone else was doing in the small Southland town I grew up in. And that's what I did. I started driving everywhere. And we tend to be creatures of habit. We will take the mode of transport that we last took. So if we're in the habit of driving our car to work or to do the shopping, then that's what we'll do next time because we don't have to think about doing anything different. So I thought maybe I should be a bit more intentional about my own <coughs> travel behaviours. And uh, hearing other people talk, it's quite important to do this when you're facing a life transition. So if you're moving to a different centre, if you're starting a new job, if you have children, suddenly your transport issues are up for grabs. And uh, my main job is at Christchurch Hospital. It's quite a high staff turnover there, and this is something I do. At morning tea with the new people that come in, I say, well, how are you um, travelling here to Christchurch Hospital? And they say, well, I'm thinking about busing, or thinking about driving, or thinking about biking, but I don't have a bike because I've just moved from town. So I'll say, well, you know, I've got some spare bikes at home. You can borrow one of those for as long as you need it. And try and get them in the habit of biking. And uh, a lot of people are really appreciative of that opportunity. So it's quite important if you do have the opportunity to do that with people, then I uh, highly recommend it. So I engaged in some transport planning for my own journeys. I listed all the journeys that I would typically do around Christchurch and on a you know, regular basis, so not just a one-off, but these are my regular trips. The ones in green are the ones that I do in bike already. I bike my kids to daycare through Central City, regardless of quite a dangerous route, but never had any problems. That's quite a rare thing in the daycare I go to. I've you know, occasionally met other people bringing their kids by bikes, but mostly I'm the only one doing it, unfortunately. And I bike to work. Uh, now these are trips that a lot of people don't do. Um, I talk to people who are avid sports cyclists on the weekend who would never dream of biking to work. Why, I'm not quite sure, particularly after the earthquake when there are huge queues of cars backed up. Uh, it's a mystery to me, but... Uh, those are journeys I would normally do. But there are other things that I have used the car two or three times a week for. So shopping. I've tried putting things in backpacks and, you know, family of four kids, it's pretty hard to get the amount of stuff in the panniers and it's just, it frustrates me when I tr have tried to do that before. Uh, I am a musician, so I have a bass guitar and amplifier, which is quite big, and I couldn't transport that on my bike, no matter how I tried it, uh, before I discovered bike trailers. Uh, carrying general loads, you know, we have a gas oven, need to carry the gas bottle down to get it filled. I like kayaking, so biking up to the beach to splash in the surf. And uh, I like skiing in winter as well, so I'd often try and carpool. But getting to the place where I'd meet the driver of the carpool car uh, was a bit of an issue. Uh, visiting my parents in Kaiapoi, uh, often have friends come in from different parts, say, oh, can you pick us up from the airport? If you want to drive out to the airport, pick them up. There's all these journeys I was doing. Um, another thing we do with the uh, kids, I go to a church and in the holidays uh, they give the t normal teachers a rest, so I'd take a whole lot of uh, creative junk along and lots of big box of tools and they'd all have a fantastic time making this stuff. That's another journey I had to take the car for. Doing up our old uh, villa and uh, renovation supplies, I have to go and get stuff, so it's another car journey. Moving furniture around, helping friends move houses, that sort of thing. And uh, family holidays is another uh, thing we'd often take the car for. 
I've just got a whole lot of pictures of uh, how I've used the bike trailer. It was the, the revolutionary thing though, for me. Because most of these journeys that I was using the car for were for carrying loads. So uh, there's a lot of, you know, if I could save all those journeys, then I'd be saving 90% of my car journeys around town. So this is me and my bass guitar and amplifier, uh, happily cycling off to the music practice. That was the first load I ever carried on a bike trailer, and it uh, started me off in a very uh, positive way. Here's me on my kayak, uh, about to head off to the beach to splash in the surf, which is uh, very good. That's the uh, gas bottle in the uh, back of the trailer. I've had a full barbecue on the back of the trailer as well, with the gas bottle attached to it. But uh, my four-year-old actually uh, biked down to the garage uh, with the gas bottle in the back as well, and they managed to do that. So uh, even a small kick could carry a relatively heavy load. That's uh, me and my ski gear, about to head off to meet my carpool ride and head up to the mountains. So we could make use of the sort of uh, more efficient use, rather than just me being a single occupant driving the car across town. I could use the bike for that part of the journey and then share the car for the rest of it. This is an extra large trailer I use for picking up people from the airport. So I can put, I've picked up old folding bikes uh, from Trade Me. So I can put three folding bikes in the bins in the trailer and a fourth person on the back seat of the tandem. So I can pick up four people from the airport and put all their luggage. I haven't done four yet, I have to say. Uh, two is the most I've ever done, but uh, if you ever are looking for a ride. Uh, this is uh, one time I picked up Nandor Tanchos from one of, uh, before he retired from politics. He had a talk out at Lincoln, so he brought, preferred his own bike. So I carried the bike out to the airport and then we biked out to Lincoln University from the airport. It was a uh, very good trip. This is the, uh, again, the airport pickup trailer, the extra large one, which I use for the creative junk. So there's uh, relatively heavy stuff down the bottom, the tools and the fixing things that we uh, stick everything together with. And then fill the bins up with lots of junk and uh, tubes, that sort of thing. A great fun activity. This is uh, the large trailer with the building supplies on it. It's a couple of uh, relatively heavy plastic sheets. This is a three-wheel trailer, which is for particularly heavy or unstable items. As a friend of mine who was uh, going car free again, but he uh, had to pick up a new fridge and take his old one down to the recycling depot, so he used the three wheel trailer to uh, transport the fridge around, which uh, worked very well. Uh, the bus racks on the, uh, the bike racks on the buses has been a good uh, development in terms of uh, getting out to Kaiapo to visit my parents because they might pick them up and take them out to play at their house, but then I have to pick them up at the end of the day, so now I can bike out to Kaiapo chuck my bike on the uh, bus rack and we all bus back into town. So that's another way of saving a car journey. So getting back to my list of journeys that I do, um, most of them now I can do uh, with my bike and the trailer attached, which has been very good. Family holidays, and loading up the whole family with all the gear, I uh, still use the car for that, but that's relatively efficient use of the car with six of us in it. It's uh, not just me by myself in the car, which is... Uh, relatively inefficient way of using a private motor car. So it's been a very good development uh, reducing the number of car journeys I do uh, around town. I've started up a small hobby business making these bike trailers to try and encourage other people to uh, achieve similar reductions in their car usage. So I've sold over a hundred of those now. Um, I think there's a lot of room for improvement in that and I'm trying to encourage people just by loaning them out for free uh, for a month or so just so they can get a feel of what it's like. There seems to be a bit of a psychological barrier in trying something new, so the easier I can make that for people, the better. Unfortunately, in travel behaviours, the only thing that seems to make a real difference is a hike in the petrol prices, and I noticed a big increase uh, last year when the petrol prices went up. So there was a lot more interest in people trying to find ways to reduce their car use, and unfortunately, petrol's gone back down again, so we'll look forward to an increase. All right. And you make these yourself, right? You want to come get your bike? <laughs> it's got a kickstand. Women want a kickstand. 